Welcome to this expert mini module on adjusting instruction in response to student data. In Project Expert, we are developing and testing a program to support teacher expertise in data-based instruction and improve outcomes for upper elementary students with persistent reading challenges. We have two guiding questions for this module. Throughout this module, we will think through content related to adjusting our instruction in response to student data. The first guiding question is how can I determine whether to make an instructional adjustment? Based on what the data indicates, what are some examples of instructional adjustments I can make? Once we have our progress monitoring data, we need to graph it. We can then use the graph to help us determine whether to make an instructional adjustment. If the graph indicates that the student is still not progressing to the intervention or instruction, we move to the next step in the DBI process. At this point in the DBI process, you've provided the intervention and collected and graphed progress monitoring data. However, you may observe that the student is still not adequately responding to the intervention or instruction. By this point, you've already collected multiple points of progress monitoring data. However, this only tells us that there is a problem. It does not diagnose exactly what the problem is. Therefore, progress monitoring, or CBM data, does not alone give us the information we need to know how to adjust our instruction and intervention. The next step is to collect diagnostic data to better understand why the student may not be responding. Our goal with diagnostic assessments is to identify specific aspects of the instruction or environment that we can adjust to better meet the student's needs. See our mini module on CBM graphs for more information on determining student response from CBM data. Based on our progress monitoring and diagnostic assessment data, we can determine whether to intensify our instruction to better fit our students' needs. As you start to think about how to adapt your intervention, it is important to consider that changing an intervention takes a lot of time, effort, and resources. This should be kept in mind before you make changes to the entire intervention. It is important to consider the intensity of instruction that the student requires in order to make progress on their reading goals. This will inform which adjustment the student requires to meet their needs. Teachers should refer to their student's diagnostic assessment and use their knowledge of the student to inform whether a quantitative change, i.e. dosage, or a qualitative change, i.e. how instruction is delivered, is necessary. It is possible to make both qualitative and quantitative changes at the same time. However, you don't want to make too many adjustments because you may not be able to determine which alteration is responsible for the increase or decrease in student progress. It is imperative that we make sure intervention is appropriate and has been delivered as intended before ultimately deciding that we need to make an instructional adjustment. Often, it is just as effective to adjust how you are implementing the intervention or adjust a component of the intervention as it is to make changes to the whole intervention. Before adjusting, be sure that the reading intervention delivered should have intended effects. Ask yourself, has the student been taught using a research-based intervention that is appropriate for their needs? Has the program been implemented with fidelity, including content, dosage, or group size? Has the program been implemented for a sufficient time period to accurately assess a student's response to the intervention? Did you answer yes to all above? Can you adjust how the intervention is implemented or adjust a portion of the intervention? If you answer no to these questions, then you need to determine if the intervention you originally implemented at the start of the DBI process is well aligned with your target behavior and begin progress monitoring again. Next, we will look at some examples of the types of instructional adjustments you can make. If the data indicates that the student is not making progress on their goals and you've have determined that instruction needs to be adjusted, then there are some practical ways to adjust instruction or the intervention. It can often feel daunting to make changes to instruction, but you should feel empowered to make changes with the current resources that you have in your classroom. 
we will show you five key ways to intensify instruction according to the taxonomy of intervention intensity. The types of adjustment include dosage, so increasing the number of opportunities to practice, respond, and receive feedback, learning environment, you can change the group size or heterogeneous groupings, cognitive supports, include note-taking, graphic organizers, or self-regulation strategies, alignment, ensuring that the primary content focus matches, it, matches your targeted reading skills, and delivery, so providing explicit instruction or gradual fading of practice supports. If CBM progress monitoring data shows that instruction should be adjusted, teachers should use their knowledge of the student's skills, motivation, and response to instruction, and hypothesize about adjustments likely to produce more growth. The information gleaned from diagnostic assessments can help guide problem-solving teams to make these hypotheses. There are many ways school personnel can intensify an individualized instruction. One way to adjust intervention instruction is to change the dosage. This includes the frequency or the number of sessions per week, the length, the number of minutes per session, or the duration, the length of intervention start to finish. Some examples of adjusting the dosage include increasing from three sessions to five sessions, increasing from 25 to 45 minute sessions, and extending the intervention from eight weeks to 18 weeks. Sometimes simply spending more time with an intervention can be effective since students have more opportunities to learn skills and strategies and receive immediate corrective feedback. In this case, the intervention itself does not need to change. Another way to adapt interventions is to change the learning environment. This may look like reducing the group size, homogeneous groupings, and strategies to support attention and engagement. Some examples include going from five students to two students in a group, grouping students of similar ability levels, and reducing distractions and noise. Whatever adjustments you decide to make, it's important to document these changes and note when the changes were made on the student's graph. Then, when viewing the graph, you will be able to see whether the adjustments correlate with improvements in the student's reading or whether further adjustments need to be made. Another way to adjust intervention instruction is to implement cognitive supports. Students may have difficulty processing or retaining information. Teachers provide students with cognitive strategies in addition to the intervention. Some examples of cognitive supports include note-taking, graphic organizers, mnemonic strategies, and self-regulation strategies. When making adjustments to instruction and intervention, it is important that your intervention match the desired skills you wish to target. Making an alignment instructional adjustment may include slowing the pace of the introduction of new material, more frequent and systematic review of material, more or less of a certain component of the intervention based on what the student needs, or prioritizing the skills that the student needs to know. Some examples of aligning your instruction to student needs include selecting certain reading skills to focus on and incorporating grade level standards. Some students require more intensive delivery of instruction. Adaptations to delivery of instruction should be implemented with fidelity. Adjustments to delivery should teach a skill in a systematic and explicit manner, model and scaffold steps, connect to previous learning, and gradually fade prompting. Some examples of instructional adjustments include chunking skills into smaller units and providing extra practice opportunities. Now that you have your diagnostic data and an understanding of what types of instructional adjustments are available, you can use your data to align to the instructional adjustment decisions you need to make. Prior to starting to making changes to instruction, recall that implementation must be done systematically and with fidelity. Let's look at some examples of how you can connect your diagnostic data to what instructional adjustments you need to make. Diagnostic data may indicate that a student has inconsistent accuracy on a reading comprehension measure after lunch every day. The student has difficulty engaging and staying on task. This may indicate a need for an additional cognitive support such as a self-regulation strategy for the student to do directly before the reading comprehension task or move the student to a quieter learning environment. 
In another example, diagnostic data may indicate that the student is making consistent errors in reading fluency, but is making gains in reading comprehension acquisition. This may indicate a need to prioritize frequent and systematic opportunities for the student to practice reading fluency skills over other fundamental reading skills. In another example, diagnostic data may indicate that after reading a book aloud, the student does not recall information to answer comprehension questions. This may indicate a need for a change, such as the addition of cognitive support, such as a graphic organizer, that can be implemented to assist the student in remembering the information as they read the book aloud. In a last example, diagnostic data may indicate that on Tuesday, the student got 60% accuracy on a decoding task. Over the course of the week, the student's accuracy gradually fell. This may indicate a need for chunking the task into smaller units, providing a cumulative review and scaffolding along the way before introducing more complex tasks. For those with persistent problems, you may need to implement the diagnostic, instructional adaptation, and progress monitoring steps of the DVI process multiple times. Here are some additional examples of instructional adjustments. More oral reading practice, targeted mini lessons such as on specific phonics, sight word practice during entry tasks, task analysis of targeted skills, student self-regulation checklist, and increasing the duration of an intervention from 20 to 40 minutes. Consider this case study. Juniper is a second grade student. She struggles with reading fluency. The current intervention includes small heterogeneous group of six students, 20 minutes per session, two days a week, and a multi-component reading program. Your turn. How would you adjust instruction for this student? Here are some potential examples of the types of adjustments you could make in Juniper's reading intervention to better, better fit her needs. These are just some thoughts. There may be multiple reasonable adjustments that you can make based on the diagnostic data and the knowledge you have of Juniper and her educational context. You can reduce to a smaller homogeneous group of two to three students, increase sessions to 30 minutes per session, three days a week, focus skill development on reading fluency skills, provide multiple opportunities throughout the day to practice reading fluency skills. Let's take a moment to reflect on how to adjust instruction in response to student data. If you need a bit more time, pause the video to think about these questions. How does the information in this module connect to how you currently make decisions about instructional adjustments? How will this inform future instructional adjustments you make? Let's review our guiding questions. How can I determine whether to make an instructional adjustment? You can evaluate if you have used a research-based intervention, make sure that you have implemented the intervention with fidelity and for a sufficient time period. Based on what the data indicates, what are some examples of instructional adjustments I can make? You can make changes to the dosage, environment, cognitive supports, aligning instruction to student needs, or instructional delivery. Thank you for your time and engagement during this mini module. Check out our Project Expert YouTube channel for other mini modules and resources to support database decision making and reading. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For questions about Project Expert, please contact the principal investigator Dr. Jessica Tost at the University of Texas at Austin. Dr. Tost's email is jrtoste at austin.utexas.edu. Project Expert is supported by a grant from the Institute of Education Sciences, U.S. Department of Education. Thank you.